Hello, my name is Patrick Chamura, and I will be talking to you about AMP. AMP stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages. Um, what exactly is it? It's an open source project that assists developers in creating fast loading static sites that have you ever experienced when you load a page on your phone and you start reading the text, but all of a sudden all of the ads, the images start loading in and everything just gets smushed down to the bottom and you lose your place while you're reading? This entire project was built to avoid this exact problem. Um, it consists of three major components, uh, AMP HTML, AMP JS, and the AMP CDN, which I will go over a bit in a bit. Uh, AMP is basically a set of specifications that can be combined to a solution rather than being an end-to-end -end, uh, product. <coughs> Sorry. If a page doesn't load within three seconds, on average, 40% of the users will decide just to leave and quit and never return to that site. This is another thing that AMP aims to achieve by reducing the file sizes and limiting what content can actually be displayed on the page. Uh, so far, to date, over six, 640,000 websites use AMP, and th the average mean load time is a under one second which is a vast performance increase over rendering regular web pages on a mobile device. Uh, AMP pages are on average four times faster and use ten times less data compared to non-AMP pages. Uh, the most often used case for AMP is currently news sites like the Wall Street Journal, Time, Washington Post, even BuzzFeed uses this because all they render is basically text and images which they require the speed to attract more users. If you click a link and you notice it's slow, you'll never go back to that site. Uh, why do we need it? Uh, users will want to view their content without viewing annoying ads that block the entire site or, um, how else would I put it? Uh, basically without ruining a user experience. But on the other hand, content creators also need to make revenue. Um, to make revenue, they need to keep readers engaged, and to keep them engaged, they offer instant delivery on their content. Uh, now I'll go into how exactly AMP works. I mentioned the three components earlier. AMP HTML is a set of HTML tags made to fit AMP specifications. To limit Actually, to increase performance, the AMP project has decided to limit certain features of and impose restrictions on certain tags of HTML by implementing their own versions of them. For example, an image tag uh, will be an AMP-specific image tag. Another component is AMP.js, which is just the library responsible for loading all the external resources that get rendered on the page further on. Lastly is an optional component called the AMP CDN, which stores a cached version, cached version on Google servers. And since most companies don't have servers worldwide, Google is known for their mass network of servers. If you're a smaller business and you want faster load times, you might as well opt in for this feature because your web page will be hosted on multiple servers from Google. Uh, here I'll go over a short code snippet of a simple hello world example with an AMP HTML page. The first thing you'll notice is that the AMP, uh, the HTML tag has a either a lightning bolt emoticon or you could also use HTML AMP to indicate that the web page will be an AMP document. Inside the head you will notice that the script tag is asynchronous. Almost all script tags inside an AMP document must be asynchronous to prevent blocking rendering once the page is actually being loaded. Uh, this script tag imports the AMP JS project, uh, which handles the resource acquisition from the server. Uh, also, AMP pages need a canonical link to a non-AMP web page. If that doesn't exist, you can also link it to yourself to itself. Uh, the reason for this is if you view the website on a non-mobile device, it would automatically default to rendering the canonical web page. Uh, the style tags, which is a major part of this, the CSS is limited to 50 kilobytes for the entire web page. 
uh, style tags must be inline, and all CSS must also be inline. Uh, the body tags and a few of the other HTML tags can remain the same, like H1s. But if something has a larger screen size, like an image, a video, uh, you must use the AMP specific tag, which is AMP image, which predetermines, well, you set the width and the height, which allows the browser to render a empty box for that specific image so the content does not get messed up while it fetches the image from the server. So instead of seeing the whole image pop in, you might see a, a gray box, which is a placeholder image for that specific part until the image is actually fetched from a server. Here is a more in-depth example. Uh, the only major difference is most script, all script tags must have a asynchronous tag in it. And the only exception to this is if it's an application ID plus JSON script tag, which is just the metadata for search engines to view. That's the only script tag that is allowed. Uh, at the bottom, you will see an AMP add, which fetches the add, but you also notice that the height and width is already predetermined, which allows the ads to be fixed in one spot and instead of popping in and pushing everything down, which is the main thing we're trying to avoid here. The, there are several limitations for using AMP, which is why we get such an increase in performance. Uh, you're only allowed to use asynchronous JavaScript, <coughs> sorry, asynchronous scripts. AMP sites must use asynchronous script tags to prevent blocking while the DOM is being constructed. Uh, third party JS is allowed, but it must be in a iframe, which also has a fixed height and width. Declare resources size statically. Resources like images and ads must have a specified height and width property. This allows AMP to position the elements before they are fetched. This allows the AMP site to make one HTTP request to lay out the entire page instead of having to fetch multiple GET requests for every single individual image, ad, and other components that may load. All the CSS must be inline, which also prevents the site from making another GET request if you use an out, a linked uh, CSS file. Uh, it's limited to 50 kilobits to prevent creators from getting too fancy and limit their uh, they don't want you to overuse CSS. And the transformations must are only uh, opacity and transitions, since they can be rendered on the GPU. Uh, lastly, the pre-connect API is the CDN network that Google has developed. It preloads only the visible section of a new page that a user might click, which gives it the imp <coughs> impression of instant loading. What this is, is when you do a Google search nowadays and you see a list of topics that will come up, and usually the first few links will be AMP links because they rank higher in the search results. The way it works is instead of preloading the entire website, it will only preload the view that you will see when you initially hit that website. So if you have to scroll down to see further content, that will be rendered later on once the user actually achieves the page. And this saves on uh, CPU usage and data usage. Uh, resources that are CPU intensive, like iframes and uh, video tags, won't get rendered or downloaded, I should say, because it's too much if the user doesn't actually click the link. Uh, the tool that you can use to validate if your AMP site is actually complying with all of the specs required is AMP Validator. To do this, you simply append deployment1 to the end of an AMP URL, which validates the page if you followed all the guidelines. It, if you go to the Chrome DevTools and you run your site with that link appended to it, uh, you'll get uh, all of the validation errors, if you have any, on the page at the bottom in the Chrome DevTools. Uh, that was my talk. Thank you very much.